In the DC Rebirth era, Tim Drake, the third Robin, underwent significant development and transformation. Reintroduced as a key member of the Batman family, Tim took on the mantle of Red Robin, maintaining his detective skills and leadership qualities. His storyline gained prominence with his involvement in the detective comic series where he formed and led a team of young heroes under Batman's mentorship. During a mission, Tim was seemingly killed by a mysterious force, only to be revealed later as imprisoned by Mr. Oz. His return was marked by a deepened resolve and sense of purpose, as he discovered that Mr. Oz was none other than Jor-El, Superman's father. Tim's evolution in the Rebirth era highlighted his resilience, intelligence, and enduring importance to the Batman mythos as he continued to protect Gotham and its citizens with unwavering dedication. Hey you everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are taking a dive into one of the Bat family's beloved character, Tim Drake as Robin. The design of this figure is based from the DC Rebirth era. So let's start with the packaging. The front of the box prominently displays DC Multiverse Robin Tim Drake. It has a huge clear window where we can see the figure and all that comes with it. On the right side, you'll see McParlane Toys DC Multiverse Robin Tim Drake DC Rebirth. The left side continues the window display and also says DC Multiverse Robin Tim Drake and instructions and QR code promoting their DC Universe Infinite. Finally, the back of the box features artwork of Robin from the comics. That's it for the packaging. Now let's crack this open and see if McParlane did justice to this version of Robin in action figure form. The figure scales at 7 inches or 18 centimeters. For accessories, he comes with 8 alternate hands plus the 2 closed fists that is already in him, making them all 10 alternate hands in total. Standard McParlane art card with the short biography at the back. And standard McParlane base or stand with the DC logo. Unfortunately, he doesn't come with any weapons like batarangs or a bow stop. Now, let's take a closer look at the figure. Um, I don't really know how to feel about this head sculpt. For me, it is not, and I don't know, it's very out of character for Team Drake. I think this kind of smirk is more like a Jason Ted character. Yeah. And I, I, I think when it comes to head sculpt like this, it really limits your option in posing him. I just wish that whenever... Uh, a figure is given a, a, a head sculpt that is not neutral, meaning very expressive. At least they should give us an alternate head that is either mutual, I uh, sorry, that is either neutral or an angry head. You know the basic because this this really limits your posing options when you are given a figure that. It's given an expression like this. For the body mold, I I can't really put my finger or if this is a reuse of a mold. If you guys have an idea if this is a reuse, please put it in the comment because I'm thinking maybe it's some kind of some parts of Nightwing figure or that uh 
that Batman Gordon figure, but unfortunately, I already have those hidden away, so I, I'm not really sure. This could be this could be a new mold for all I know. Anyway, as far as the paint job is concerned, mine has some some problem when it comes to the paint because there are some reds there and there. Now, I think that's the only th those are the only paint splashes that I think that I think is on this figure which I guess is, an, is, is acceptable I do love the design of this Robin costume I'm not familiar with it but I do like the design that of the separation of the red and then this belt this is actually the first time that I noticed that McFarlane gave us a belt that is completely you know, not glued on the diaphragm. And it is actually a pretty good looking utility belt. I guess they, they did try an effort to copy it. I even love the details of that rope there yeah that will give it to McFarlane when they actually exert an effort when it comes to this kind of stuff the leg is practically practically just black but I do like the you know the tiny the tiny the tiny addition of green on it Yeah, I, I I I like that. Makes the it makes the legs a li at least interesting and not boring. The hands. This is actually why I think that this is a new sculpt. I'm not sure if is the Robin. Yeah, don't don't put me on that because I haven't really. Put any of my Robin figures out of the box, so I'm not sure if this is a reuse also for of the Robin mold. But I think it is too slim because one of my problem with those Robin figures is that they they are not as slim as this one, which is really what I want to like about this figure. It is it does uh, the proportion is does represent the the character. Although, if you if you notice, I said that scale wise, this is seven inch or eighteen centimeters, so it is still quite big for Robin. But yeah, I gave up on the scaling of McFarlane a long time ago. It's not really something that they they are good at, or I think I think they don't even it's not even in their vocabulary because the time that I. Uh, that the, when I was trying to collect the Teen Titans and uh, Kid Flash and Beast Boy's size is basically the same size as the all oh, as the as Arsenal. I gave up on McFarlane focusing on scale. So if you guys are the kind of collector who are really uh, Wherein skill scaling is very important to you, I guess the McFarlane line will really disappoint you. I mean, as far as the look, this is a very good looking figure, but scale wise, it is too big still. I remember to go. I remember passing on buying this figure, but when I saw the promo figure. I the promo pictures. I read this. This word cape is actually the selling point that made me pull the trigger and pre-order it. And having it on end, it is actually a pretty good material. The material use is actually pretty good, and yeah, it it does work. 
it adds the pan factor to the figure. Let's go with articulation. He can look down that far, he can look up that far, side to side. Okay, then for the arms, he can do the T pose. It has a little bit of. No, it doesn't. I, I, I thought it has a little bit of uh, butterfly articulation, but nope, it's only up to that. Bicep cut, double jointed elbow, double peg wrist. Then abdominal cut, waist rotation, together, okay, together, it really has a very good range, leaning backward, leaning forward, not too much, side to side, for the legs, okay, the thigh joint, the thigh articulation actually works. Double jointed knee, there's ankle rotation there, and then ankle pivot. Toe articulation, you can kick that far and kick back that far. And you can do the bend down. So that's it for the articulation. Overall, this is a very good looking figure. I think its main selling point is that weird cape. Um, on the cons, uh, yeah, they should have at least given us an alternate head so that we're not stuck with that one look because, because that, that look that he has really limits our option in displaying him and i also don't uh, like the fact that they provided her, us with a lot of alternate hands but they didn't give him any weapons like a batarang or at least the you know a bow stuff so i don't know what they were thinking there i mean simple bow stuff could have been enough um so if those if, if those uh if those uh, issues are okay with you, this is actually a pretty good looking figure. And yeah, it is actually another great addition in my collection of Robins. So guys, if you've reached this part of my video, thanks a lot. If you like my video, please don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And again, guys, enjoy life and keep collecting.